we have coming during the course of the day people from over 30 universities, I believe, from uh, literally all over the country. We also have uh, journalism educators from as far away as Australia and, and Kazakhstan, which is, um, uh, I think, maybe the first time we've ever had a conference here like that. Um, Mark Lodato is to my immediate left. He's the assistant dean at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, and he supervises the Cronkite School's broadcast and sports curriculum. As the news director, he supervises the broadcast news operations, including the nightly, live, national award-winning television contest, uh, newscast, Cronkite Newswatch. Ellen Shearer, to his left, is from Northwestern. She is a professor at the Medill School and also serves as co-director of the school's National Security Journalism Initiative. She joined, she joined the faculty after having served as a senior editor at Newsday and a bureau chief for 10 years with the UPI. To her left is Jason Begay, who's an assistant professor from the University of Montana and who also oversees the Native American Journalism Project there. He's leading something called ResNet, which we're about to hear about. It's a really interesting project, as well as the Native News Honors Project, which sends students to produce in-depth journalism in uh, Indian country. To his left is Chris Delboni, who's from Florida, my old home. Uh, she's, she's, she's been a foreign correspondent for many years from her native Brazil but she began teaching journalism and new media at the University of Miami School of Communication, working with the Knight Center for International Media. In September 2009, she became the first news director for the South Florida News Service. And finally, to her left is Mark Cooper from the University of Southern California Annenberg School. His, his work has appeared in many publications, including Harper's, Rolling Stone, and The Atlantic. Be, before he came to Annenberg in 2006, he, was, uh, he, he spent 10 years as producer of the weekly show Radio Nation and he founded Annenberg Digital News, which produces Neon Tommy several years ago. Thanks so much. It's a really great pleasure to be here oh. and to be able to talk about the uh, South Florida News Service, so much so that we have people from Florida here <laughs> who had to come along. John Chris is from the Miami Herald, Alan Richards, Associate Dean at FIU, Silvano Ordon is a former student at CNBC, and Barbara. Uh, at NBC now, current student. Uh, the South Florida News Service started in 2009. It was a partnership, FIU uh, School of Communication and uh, School of Journalism and Mass Communication with McCormick Foundation and the three newspapers, Miami Harrison, Sentinel, Palm Beach Post. Uh, there are three local papers that had just started to share content, which was, was a novelty as well. So basically, our goal was to produce copy to the newspapers, and they were supposed to, of course, give the students a chance to get the clips they needed so they could uh, 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 build the uh, portfolio they needed to get an internship and then to get a job. Our initial thought was graduating students. So we, I would embed myself in, the, in the, the classes in the last semester, online news that Ellen was teaching at the time, uh, video journalism, advanced news writing, and basically work with those students so they would produce the stories uh, to the papers. And, but my first goal that semester, and I had a very strategic goal every semester, and the, that first goal was to build trust with the editors. We've done that, but the problem with graduating students, so they graduate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we soon realized that, okay, that's not gonna work too well. Then at that time, Ellen was teaching, actually, introduction to journalism. Students who hadn't, uh, many of them hadn't even been fully accepted into the program, and Silvana came from that class, and, and she barely knew what she was doing, but she said, I'm passionate about it. Uh, I want to be a journalist. Make me one. I said, okay, fine. We can do that. And, and so as long as they had the passion, the commitment to journalism, we said, cool, we take you. So at that time, we changed the, 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 the focus. Rather than going to classes, I recruited from every class, from graduating seniors to students who weren't even fully accepted in the program. You want to be a journalist? Okay, come to a news meeting. So we took them out of the classrooms to independent news meetings, and I would, you know, would work with them. They would pitch ideas. Then they would come up with budget lines. And, and, I, and I, I definitely believe in pitching ideas because I think that as much as, uh, as important as writing, it's important to develop the nose for news. And then I would talk to Joan at the Herald with the other editors that would have co weekly conference calls and really they would say yes, no, change the angle, and we'll take it from there. That was going very well as well, except that our population of students, uh, they're a little bit different 
and many of them work two jobs. They support the house. They, you know, they're, they were taking six classes, working two jobs. How could they make time to independent news meeting to, to write five drafts, drafts, ten drafts of an article before they even get to the editor, and then Joan would work another five drafts with them, and until we had the, the real, you know, solid uh, news piece. So uh, uh, we needed something else, and at that point, initially we paid the students, we had the grant, you know, McCormick and the three papers gave us money, so we, we paid the students, and I was hired as, as the news director, and so we paid my salary, and he paid, we paid students $50 per story which was like, wow. Uh, then that initial grant with the economic downturn and everything, we lost it. So I stayed on uh, pretty much, you know, we didn't want to let go. So I stayed on, I'll teach a class here or there as an agent, but we didn't want to let it go until things came back and we kept working really hard. Then last year, Scripps gave us 250,000 uh, for five years. And then I was hired as, as, as a full-time as an instructor and the South Florida News Service News Director. And what we have now is two courses. South Florida News Service, the newsroom, South Florida News Service, in-depth reporting. And I teach those courses together. So the students on the first level and the second level come together in the newsroom. I still maintain them uh, independent news meetings uh, outside of those classrooms. So I'm, the, for instance, the SPJ faculty advisor. So those students who just got to school, they want to join SPJ, they come to me and I say, okay, but you got to join the SFNS. Let's start working on stories. Joan is now t teaching as an adjunct professor, like writing strategies, the basic class. So she sent me four students who just got to the program. And, and that way we have like a real full cycle that, 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 that created, we created the buzz, we created the pride, you know, and that's why we have, we, if, if we could, we could have probably 20 students here today from, flying from Miami. So basically, what, what, what I think was, uh, just in a nutshell, the success to our program, I think it was the flexibility to say, we got to change this and adapt and adjust. Uh, we had, of course we're doing multimedia, that everybody's doing, like in the spring we published about 40 stories and we, about 20 videos with that. That's a, that's a given nowadays, but the flexibility is strong and uh, I think, of course, fundamentals, multimedia with fundamentals, you know, very important, accuracy, fairness and balance, so they work with me many drafts, they work with the editors many drafts, but I think the most important word here is collaboration. We had the collaboration of the faculty, we had the collaboration of the, the editors, we had the collaboration, most importantly, of the students. They are friends, they work together, and because I have students from so many different levels coming to me, they help each other, and they come from different backgrounds, from different, uh, not just different skill levels, but all kind of different, different levels. And I think that's the, that's the newsroom of the future with so much multimedia. It's the collaboration that we need to focus on, and that's what we're teaching our students. Yes, they're learning to be good reporters, they're learning to do good video, but they're learning to be good people. And, uh, and collaborate. So I think I'll, st I'll stop now, but uh, I could talk forever. Right. So, and people know that. So I know this is uh, teaching journalism in the real world. I feel it's learning, because I feel like all the professors, editors, we're all learning, and it will never end, just like journalism. You're always learning, and that's why I changed the title. Um, I want to go back to this. Uh, first of all, I want to say that um, I want you to read this out loud, I'll read it. Kitchen 305 combines its eclectic menu, its upbeat nightlife, atmosphere, and its affordable promotions such as all you can eat, lobster, for $35, oh my god. Uh, and, into the, and if you go on and on and on, and I mentioned the Miami Heat player, and this is great, this is a story, oh my god, like you can eat lobster for $35, the Miami Heat player is gonna go there, he's gonna celebrate his 30th birthday, and this is a story. That was what I was thinking when I got into, I wasn't even in the journalism program, but I was part of the South Florida News Service. And Chris, she comes back to me and she says, excuse me, what? And she says, this is a PR pitch. I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, what is the story? And I said, the story is, this is a great restaurant and it's a neighborhood restaurant and uh, Miami Heat player is gonna go and he's gonna celebrate his birthday. She said, no, that's not a story. 
And this is all happening in emails. We maybe exchanged 17 emails, and I said, I don't understand. Why isn't it a store? It's amazing. You can eat lobster. All you can eat lobster for $35. <laughs> Miami Heat player is going to be there. He's going to celebrate his 30th birthday, and this is such a cool place. I'm like, you know what? Maybe journalism isn't for me. I can't deal with Chris. I, can't, I, I remember the day where I just had a, I'm like, I can't deal with her. I can't. I don't understand what she doesn't get. I just don't get it. One email, I wish I had it here, but we exchanged it, you know, I just re forwarded it to her. She said, come talk to me in my office. I did. Rolling my eyes, I'm like, okay. She says, what is the story? Oh my God, for the 20th time, she's asking me what the story is. And I keep telling her, all this, you know, all you can eat lobster for $35, it's, it's a great place, and James Jones is gonna be there. He's gonna celebrate his 30th birthday. I need to write something about it. I wanna get his autograph, and I wanna eat 35, and I wanna eat all the lobster. The restaurant said I could eat all the lobster for 35, for nothing. I don't have to pay the $35, she said all the red flags. We had a conversation. Basically, she kept asking me, what is the story? And that it, I ended up walking out of her office, not knowing what the story was. I really had to think about it, and she said, you know what, go there, figure it out, but that's not your story. I'll give you the option of going there, spend time there, do not eat the lobster for free. You can pay for it and, and figure it out. I did, I went there, started talking to people and I did not know what I was doing, but I went. And I was like amazed, the music was great. I'm like, yeah, I wanna dance and they offered me the lobster. I said, no, I can't, I really wanted to, but I can't because my editor told me not to. But um, I wasn't understanding why that happened. Um, this was a budget. This is what we call a budget. That's, that was my attempt to write a budget, I, I should um, say. It took me maybe ten, 10 times to write a budget until we finally got it. I actually understood what the story was, and that's, you know, the fact that you can eat lobster for $35 is not a story, or the fact that, you know, a celebrity or, you know, goes there is not a story. Um, so that was my problem. I was like, I need help. I don't get it. I can't write. Maybe I'm not as passionate as I was. Maybe I'm not a journalist. Maybe it's not in me. Maybe I should go into PR. And I kind of like thought about it. Ah, maybe I could make more money. Maybe I should just do that because it's kind of like natural uh, to just write this type of uh, pitches. Um, but then the South Florida News Service came, and that's Chris right there. And she's tough, and she kept asking what the story is and what the story was and why did I want to write that story. And I think it go, goes back to critical thinking. Actually understanding what the story is. You can get excited about doing video and doing photographs and slideshows, but really what it comes down to, it's understanding what a story is. I picked this story because it's a simple story. I didn't pick anything like investigative or anything like this. This is a very simple story and it just points out the struggles that we go through. Just, what is the story? I could write 2,000 words and just tell you about how beautiful the play is, is but what is the story? Um, this is, uh, when it, I think it was my second story that I published in the Miami Herald, and there was my story. I found a great couple. They were crazy, they were dancing, they were having a good time, and I talked to them a lot, and a lot of people. And there is um, what I wrote after like maybe 15 drafts. Um, you know, every Wednesday or Friday, Antonio and his wife drive 14 miles from Miami Gardens to Kitchen 305, a restaurant, um, at Newport Beach Hotel, no, 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 but Antonio said it's not enough. I want to come every night. Now I suffer from three addictions, my wife, Facebook, and Kitchen 305. Boom, that was my story. So it was, a, it was a, about a restaurant, but it was a story. I was storytelling through people. These two characters that I found, they were crazy about the restaurant, and that made it a story. I understood what a story was. I understood that I needed people to tell my stories, and I just didn't need the PR pitch about like, oh my God, $35 you know, dollars all you can eat lobster. And you know, this is a nice little local story uh, for the Herald that they like, you know, like restaurant stories. That was my second one. But um, you know, I think just the South Florida News Service was not a hospital, it was an emergency room. And it was an emergency room and a family, basically. And the reason I say it's an emergency room, it's because it was not Monday through Friday. It was Saturday and Sunday. There were times where I was emailing back and forth with Chris and you know, going through drafts on a Friday, on a Saturday night, on a Sunday. That's why I call it the emergency room, because she was always there. And it was a startup, basically. We were all like starting this business and we didn't have the resources, we, didn't have, we only had her, and that was it. But we worked together and we made it happen. 
so this is my journey. I didn't give up. I wanted to give up. Um, but then maybe my fourth story, I was like, oh, I kind of get it. And I started getting the, the feel for it. And this was my journey through the South Florida News Service. Um, through them, I was able to go to the Herald, where I was there for almost a year, writing, you know, anything from education to like politics, anything. I, that was really a good experience that we had through that partnership through the South Florida News Service. I was still going to school, I was still publishing through the South Florida News Service, and I was getting my byline at the Herald. Uh, through the South Florida News Service, I was publishing business stories for the Palm Beach Post, uh, Sun Sentinel, and that was basically what I was doing every day, writing stories for these three papers, getting my bylines, working directly with the editors and learning from them because I feel it's, you have to learn from everybody. You're working with different editors, some of them were easier, some of them were tougher. Joan was one of the ones that asked the most questions. She was tough, 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 but it was a good experience because I know what she wanted. I, I knew how to deal with all the editors. And then from there, I just, this is my journey. I got into the New York Times Student Journalism Institute, which was just a great experience. Then Telemundo, I did a lot of uh, work. That's where I learned about the Hispanic market, which is right now it's a hot market for everybody and everybody's trying to tap into it. And I had the opportunity to actually learn about the, actually learn about the Hispanic market. Um, Scripps Howard Foundation, I was part of it. I went to Washington. I did, you know, great reporting. And just as a side point, it, everything was with grants. <laughs> Nothing was free. And today I'm at CNBC, and the reason I am at CNBC and where I am is because of the South Florida News Service. Uh, they opened up the doors. They were my family. They still are my family. You know, I'm still here with my parents, Alan Richards and, and Crystal Boney. They're my journalism parents. And that's, I think, the most important thing, that collaboration, that, you know, that family that we have, our peers, you know, people who went through the South Florida News Service, we help each other out. You know, there were times where I was just going with different students to get the stories and helping each other. And I think that was because we don't have the resources, we had each other. And I think that's what the South Florida really embedded in us. Just the fact that we're a family and the fact that we are entrepreneurs. We have to do everything ourselves. And I guess the point I really want to make is this emergency room slash families really do work um, in giving us confidence, giving us the skills, and um, just giving us that direct rapport with the editors is really um, important. And being able to interact with them and write a story, that's what it comes down to. Um, I, didn't, I never really worried about the digital part or coding or anything like that. I, what I care about and I feel like editors appreciate is what's the story? Tell me a story. Then we'll take care about the digital you know, editing or shooting video. And that's it. Uh, the end, no, it's not the end, it's to be continued, and I hope <laughs> I could see you all in the near future. <laughs>